After the alien invasion, humanity is forced to hide in underground bunkers. The world leaders of Earth are desperately trying to keep people underground. But there is a soldier who kills one of the enemies and discovers a terrible truth. You must seek shelter immediately. The nonsuch could attack at any moment. Fifty years after the attack of something, all of humanity lives underground, although there are those who refuse to descend into the bunkers. An ordinary person can return to the surface only by becoming a soldier and serving the standard term, 100 days. One day, a soldier with the call sign someone completes his required training and boards a tank to travel to the outpost Cerberus, where he must serve his shift. On the way, the military encounters people running towards the shelter, which is called Exilium. The soldiers disembark one by one as they reach their assigned posts. Finally, it's someone's turn. However, the soldier cannot immediately enter the bunker as the door is jammed. So he climbs the watchtower to contact the command. The soldier undergoes DNA identification and the system congratulates him on the start of his 100-day service. He will have to monitor the territory, track something, and send those who stray into the shelter. The protective ring is in order, there are no breaches, all cameras are functioning, and the power supply is stable. But upon arrival at the post, the soldier does not find the person he was supposed to replace, which is a breach of protocol. The commander reassures someone, the former watchman with the call sign VAX-7 was evacuated for medical reasons. He was called up from the reserves and now he must strictly adhere to all the rules. He must not leave his zone and must be very vigilant because his vigilance is a condition for survival of humanity. They provide him with a daily access code and instruct him on how to enter the bunker through a secret passage allowing him to go outside for this purpose. Someone begins to settle in. Finally inside he discovers that the room is neglected and empty. Someone arranges his rations, lights a cigarette and polishes a glass, listening to the system's reminders to think about the safety of himself and his family. At night he dreams of laughing children, but the daily alarm clock reminds him of how many days are left until the end of his active service, and someone begins his daily routine. Exercises, showers, territory check, and food from his rations. During lunch he suddenly hears strange sounds and sees movement in the corner of the room, but doesn't have time to understand what it is. Later he reports everything to the commander, but the commander reassures him, everything is proceeding as usual. At night, someone sees children playing again. In the morning, the routine of the previous day repeats, exercises, shower, food, and the one regulated cigarette. Every day is an exact copy of the previous one. There are 87 days left until the end of his service when someone manages to catch an unknown creature, which turns out to be a white rat. However, the animal escapes without allowing itself to be properly examined. Immediately, there is a report of an attack by something on the refugees, and there is no one left alive. Someone activates the system check, and it reports that the defense lines are not damaged. But the soldier clearly sees movement in the bushes on the monitoring screen, and reports it to the commander. The commander dismisses any intrusion, and asks not to worry. There are 71 days left until the end of the term. The rat that someone named Doctor is no longer afraid of humans and he feeds it. One day there is an alert about a malfunction in one of the cameras and the soldier goes outside to perform technical maintenance on the security system. He surveys the outpost's territory, fixes the camera and finds a dead bird hanging from a tree with a token bearing his predecessor's number. Right away the system alerts him to toxic emissions and the soldier heads towards the bunker. Upon returning to the bunker, he reports everything that happened at the post including the discovery of the token to the commander. But all his concerns are quickly dismissed. The commander assures him that Vax-7 simply fell ill and is now in the bunker, recovering. The commander's overly cheerful tone makes him doubt even more. There are 65 days left. The United Nations warns of danger, urging people not to stay on the surface as resistance against something is futile. One day someone goes out onto the territory once again, and after a warning about toxic emissions, he notices an unfamiliar creature in the depths of the forest that quickly escapes from him. He reports it again, but the defense ring is intact and there is no cause for alarm. Someone decides to investigate the bunker and finds a blood stain on the wall, leading him to suspect that Vax-7 may have shot himself and was never evacuated. The soldier tries to access the video camera recordings from the closet where it happened, but the system denies him access. So, someone decides to break into the locker belonging to Vax-7 and discovers a sketchbook and a radio receiver. 
Among the drawings he finds a sketch of his own post Cerberus and the neighboring post Graham, sparking his interest. There are 54 days left until the end of his term. Someone increasingly thinks about the neighboring post and one day decides to go to Graham to try to establish contact. However, he finds that he cannot cross the perimeter because an implant in his leg activates pain with any attempt to leave the ring. The audio commands insistently urge him to return to Cerberus. He decides to take a step back and climb a tree, hoping to establish contact by waving his hand and shouting to Graham, but he receives no response. Returning to his post, he reviews the archive files, and suddenly he discovers some creature on the internal camera, and the electricity goes out. Behind him, the soldier distinctly feels someone's movement, even though the equipment insists that there is no intrusion. Someone rushes outside and even shoots at the bushes, scaring off a bird. He reports the malfunction to the commander, who promises to send the repairman, and reminds him of his duty, especially with only 40 days left. Someone tries once again to access the archive but finds it impossible as the data has been lost due to an electrical surge. The next day starts as usual but suddenly the soldier feels unwell. He takes medication and accidentally cuts his finger when he suddenly hears a cheerful children's song coming from the predecessor's closet. It turns out that VAC-7's radio is turned on and the neighbor from Graham Post is calling out to his old acquaintance. He quickly realizes that it's a different person and cuts the conversation short, despite pleas to talk to him. The electricity surges again and the soldier reminds about the specialist. The commander then tells him about an attack on a post where no one survived, so reaching distant outposts is very risky. Several more days pass. Someone starts going outside more often, and one day he discovers a woman and a child hiding from him in a cave. He tries to convince them to come down to the bunker, but the two of them run away, seemingly more afraid of him than of something. Returning inside, he hears a warning about several lost individuals in danger. However, now the soldier is not sure if they want to be saved. He talks to the rat more and more, telling it about the children and his dreams. It turns out that the ability to dream has become a thing of the past, but he has suddenly acquired it. This is seen as a sign of a mental illness. Someone keeps trying to contact his neighbor, but there is no response. One night, the soldier ventures out into the territory and kills a huge deer, which he dissects and eagerly consumes. He behaves more and more like a wild man, shooting at targets and walking without his helmet. One day, he makes another attempt to contact Graham, sending a signal with a mirror, but still receives no response, which infuriates him. On his way back, he enters a zone of toxic emissions and almost loses consciousness. In a semi-delirious state, he sees the strange creature again, which runs away from him. Regaining his senses, he tries to convey to his neighbor his belief that Vax-7 is likely being held in the forest, but Graham remains silent. There are 14 days left until the end of his shift, when a repairman finally arrives at the post. He reports on the recent attack and the deaths of many people. The man is displeased, sensing the presence of the rat. He explains that the soldier's predecessor was friends with the rat, considering it the height of foolishness. The technician dispels someone's fears, explaining that the shadow on the wall is himself, due to a system glitch. Strangely, the cameras in the defense ring are turned off, even though the soldier checked them just now. Then the rat climbs on to the table, and upon seeing it, the repairman forcefully shoves it away. The soldier rushes to the motionless rat and pleads with it not to die, which infuriates the repairman even further. The soldier aims his gun at the repairman, ordering him to disable the internal camera and unlock the archive video recordings. The repairman refuses and someone hits him. However, he still can't do anything because the access requires the personal codes of two guards. A fight erupts between the two men. Someone sustains several injuries but eventually emerges victorious. Afterward, the repairman shares his experience of encountering something. When he was a soldier, his helicopter crashed in the desert. Of all the survivors, only he and his partner remained. The repairman went for help and when he returned, he found the second soldier without ears. It turns out that something affects people through sound and the guy cut off his own ears to avoid hearing the horrifying noise. During a sandstorm, they saw a huge shadow circling around them, but they never understood what it was. When he was eventually found, his lungs were filled with sand and he had an unexplained catheter in his throat. The soldier locks the repairman in the bunker, tends to his wounds and reports to the commander that everything is in order. Afterward, he figures out that he can access his predecessor's information through his radio.
Finally, he manages to open the archive footage, which makes it clear that Vax-7 did indeed go insane due to exhaustion and stress. Someone shares this information with his neighbor. The soldier is overwhelmed with conspiracy theories. He is convinced that the leadership is deceiving the common people by inventing something, as no one has actually seen it. The mission to send people underground is a ploy to restrict the consumption of dwindling natural resources while the rich and powerful enjoy the leftovers. He requests a meeting with his neighbor, who reluctantly agrees. There are seven days left when upon hearing another system announcement about something attacking someone flies into a rage and smashes the alarm with the jar into which the rat has just climbed. Realizing that he killed his own friend he walks outside naked and once again encounters the monstrous creature. Extracting a pair of deer antlers from a tree he mortally wounds the monster only to recognize Vax-7 by a tattoo on his neck. He returns to release the repairman and tells him about the conspiracy convinced that it was his predecessor's tales that drove him mad. But no one will deceive someone anymore because he's no longer afraid. The soldier demands to know where the power can be cut off because he intends to save the people by disabling the defense lines. The repairman is horrified. He will doom humanity, but he obeys the madman. Someone contacts his neighbor and informs him of his decision that he is coming to him. It's time to put an end to the madness that keeps people underground and make them free.